Sometimes one feels very, very inept or unqualified to walk the spiritual path. Oh, Gary, I like what you're saying. I'd love to be a part of this, but you just don't understand, Sri Gary, where I've come from. You don't understand how bad I've been. There's things I've done I don't even dare tell you or anyone else, and they bother me deeply. But I know for a fact it disqualifies me for any high spiritual path. Loved ones, you're being buffooned by your own mind and your own conditioning. I have never, never witnessed the Lord or a true master turn down anyone if they were qualified. Please tuck that back in your consciousness and contemplate that because there are negative forces that are going to try and stop you right in your track. Sometimes just taking a shower at the end of the day. It can be very, very tough. Getting to work, cleaning the house. I'm going to clean the house. Next thing you know, two or three things pop up and it's hard to get at it. Or just doing the dishes. Or I'm going to go to work and put in a good day of productivity and the next thing you know, you're in a traffic jam. Or you got a flat tire and one says, what in the world is going on? Here I'm taking a step to improve my life or to get something constructive and progressively completed. And there seems to be a counter energy, a neutralizing energy that comes in and just wants to floor me from trying to make myself better. That's the way it is. Remember, loved ones, it's a dual wor world. If you put out five points uh, in a direction to improve yourself, there will be five points or five degrees to try and balance out that movement. You have to understand that. That's very, very important. All of the lower worlds just sway back and forth and they have to stay in balance. This is very important to understand. Okay, spiritual people usually have a checkered past. They usually don't go with convention and tradition very well at all. They usually can see right through the culture and the society and all their reforms and recommended levels of behavior. Uh, and they, can, they, they, don't, they don't agree with a lot of it. They kind of find themselves like a black sheep. If you were the black sheep of your family, sing the praises of God because it is, I am serious. <laughs> it's actually kind of a relief. I know I was the black sheep. I was so black that if there was a word that was even darker than black, I would be it. <laughs> I didn't fit in at all. I sure tried to. Oh God, did I try to. I wanted to do right and well and all that, but it just didn't fit. The clothes I was trying to put on, the pants came to here, and the shirts to here. And, and I'm talking about metaphorically, of course, uh, trying to adopt the religious teachings. Uh, they just didn't fit. It's like the Savior that I adopted as a child couldn't go with me where I had to go. The experiences I had to go through, it couldn't accompany me. All I got was judgment and, and condescending remarks from fellow believers, and it's like, Jesus couldn't even go with me and properly counsel me in some of the experiences I had. All I could get out of it is, you are a sinner. You better patch this up, you see. Well, a true master, loved ones, will accompany you uh, wherever you have to go and whatever you have to experience. And if you're at the bottom of the barrel, drink, drug, money, love, loneliness, despair, depression, the master will be there right with you. Don't ever, ever think that a true master will desert you in your hour of need. That's when you want a spiritual current and power that is so hep and so big that not, not that it will overlook your error in your way, but stay with you, console you, be a friend and lovingly guide you out of it so you can experience a freedom from the very activity you were in. This is what we call in general, loved ones, our karmas. We all have a heap of karmas. And that's what keeps the world so precisely in balance is the law of karma. Everything balances out. If we've got a big storm coming along, we're going to get a lot of sun. 
if someone's really had a really a nice role in constructiveness and progressiveness, they're going to, in time, kind of go backwards and go the opposite way. But with all of these things going on, our conditioning, our karmas, not fitting into the world, feeling like we're a black sheep, all the hassles and, and habits and uh, uh, addictions to sex, to power, to money, Lust, in other words. Lust is not just sexual. Lust is an inordinate desire for something. Some it could be cars. Some it could be children, and they got 10, 15 children. And they really think making babies is what it's about. There's some religions, of course, that push that. Well, whatever for? It's to increase their ranks. They're looking 100, 200, 300 years down the road, you see. So it's just a power play. But we're into truth. And someone that comes down into this world is unnerved with the reality they find themselves in. And they are also unnerved, loved ones, with their own homeostasis, their point of view, their anger, how they look at things. They just become disillusioned with all of this. This is what we are trying to gain liberation from. In looking for a true spiritual path, salvation is out of the question until you become liberated. Liberated from what you say? Liberated from all your karmas, all your hates and angers, all your prejudices and bias. You need to be liberated from all of those outer conditions that plague the best of us. Liberation in looking for a true spiritual path, O oh seekers of God. You want a path that speaks to you about liberating yourself from the woes and ills of life. That liberation transpires when you are able to attain self-realization. Liberation is liberation from all the cause and effect, or the karmas, that rule below this juncture right here. All of this is based on karma and duality. And this is what drives us nuts. We're told by our parents, be good. And we have the strong desire to be bad. And there's, they're always playing off of each other. And this is what we need to be liberated from, you see. And liberation transpires in Daswan Dwar, where the first level of self-realization is attained. Now, once you are liberated, the soul comes into view right here, self-realization. We no longer feel that we are a higher mind. We no longer feel that we are our karmas and our pain and heartache. Most people feel they are. No, 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 no. Those are just your experiences. It's not you. Don't get sucked into that. There's the experience, and there's the experiencer. You're the latter. Very important. And if you don't understand that, then you think you're your experience. And then, of course, our experiencers are so shaky, you know, good one day, not so good the next, that our opinion of ourselves uh, is always fluctuating. And we can't get anywhere. You feel good and then not so good. So in looking for a true spiritual path, please uh, understand, and I'm not telling you, I'm asking you that your uh, true spiritual path should talk somewhere, a paragraph, a couple lines, something, someplace. Uh, about liberation and why you need to become liberated. And once you're liberated, then the soul comes out and then the soul is fitted with the proper devotion in order to worship God, which is up above. And then from liberation, we go up into salvation, which is experienced up here in Sakan, which means the home of truth. And so salvation is up here. So a true spiritual path, I don't mean to beat a dead horse, or, or, uh, but a true path is, needs to inculcate liberation and salvation. And if anyone is talking about being saved down here, this is fine, but it is very, very temporary. And saved, saved from what? 
Okay, that's very, very important. Now I'm trying to help you seekers of truth.